There are many myths out there concerning what happens when a Q-tip hits a cue ball. This video busts them all. First, some people think the tip stays in contact with the cue ball for a perceptible amount of time. This is simply false. Here is some recent high-speed video camera footage from Pubo Huang, filmed at 24,000 frames per second. Regardless of how a hit might feel, the Q-tip is in contact with the cue ball only for a minuscule amount of time. Practically speaking, the cue ball is gone pretty much as soon as the tip touches the ball, way before any follow-through can occur. For this playing cue with a hard leather tip at lag shot speed, the tip contact time is only about a thousandth of a second. Some people think you have control over the cue and cue ball while the tip is in contact with the ball. This is simply false. What you do during the stroke into the ball does have an effect, but at contact, the cue does all the work. The incredibly brief tip contact time is much too short for the grip hand to have any important effect. What you feel during a hit is the cue slowing down a lot as a result of the hit, and the force required to speed up the cue again after the cue ball is long gone. Here's an excerpt from my HSV B40 video providing more explanation. Here's a graph of Q speed in miles per hour versus Q distance in inches. As the Q is accelerated during the forward stroke, you can see the speed increase over most of the forward stroke. Just before contact with the ball, the Q is no longer accelerating. The speed has leveled out to a maximum constant speed. During the incredibly brief contact time, the Q loses about 40% of its speed. After tip contact, during the first part of the follow-through, the Q speed increases due to momentum of the forearm and spring back of the grip. Finally, the Q slows to a stop during the remainder of the follow-through. Some people think tip contact time varies a lot with tip type and hardness. This is simply false. It does vary, but the amount it varies over a couple of thousandths of a second make no real difference and has no noticeable effect on a shot. Remember, the playing cue with a hard leather tip at lag shot speed had a tip contact time of 1.3 thousandths of a second. Here's a clip for a house cue with a very soft tip, also at lag shot speed. This tip contact time is 1.9 thousandths of a second. Here's a clip for a break cue phenolic tip also at lag shot speed. This tip contact time is 0.8 thousandths of a second. A softer tip does have a longer contact time. For example, the number for the soft tip is more than twice that of the phenolic tip, but again, it is still extremely small. Some people think that because a soft tip stays in contact with the cue ball longer, it can impart more or less spin than a harder tip, but this is not true. For an explanation why, see the tip hardness effects resource page linked in the video description. Some people think tip contact time varies a lot with shot speed. This is simply false. Remember, the playing cue with the hard leather tip at lag shot speed had a tip contact time of 1.3 thousandths of a second. Here's a clip for the same cue at very fast speed, off almost four rails up and down the table. This tip contact time is lower at 1.1 thousandths of a second. Here's a clip for the house cue with a very soft tip, also at very fast speed. As with the hard leather tip, the tip contact time is shorter at 1.5 thousandths of a second. Here's a clip for the break cue phenolic tip at the same very fast speed. This tip contact time is the same as at lag speed. Q-tip contact time for a phenolic tip does not vary much or at all with shot speed. With leather tips, the tip contact time is longer at slower shot speed, but again, it is still extremely small. The amount it varies makes no real difference and has noticeable effect on a shot. Some people think that because unintentional miscues are not fouls, that they do not involve double hits or sliding contact. This is simply false. With a normal shot, the cue ball separates from the Q-tip almost immediately with only a single hit. With a large enough tip offset from center, because the cue ball doesn't separate from the tip as fast, it is sometimes possible for the cue tip to return to the cue ball for a secondary hit, especially with a stiff cue that springs back quickly. Normally, this won't be noticed, but with the side spin shot, it might cause a little more cue ball deflection than one might expect with a normal single hit shot. 
This is different from a miscue, where the tip does not grab the ball at all and slips off immediately. This causes sliding contact, and the tip, ferrule, or shaft usually touches the cue ball multiple times during the stroke. Here's another example. But regardless of the sliding contact and multiple hits, an unintentional miscue is not considered a foul. Here's an example where a miscue on a draw shot causes the cue ball to launch in the air. This is called a scoop shot. You are not allowed to do this on purpose, for example, to clear an obstacle ball. Some people think the Q-tip slides on the cue ball during a good hit. This is simply false. In older video clips, like this famous one from a group in Austria, it was difficult to tell. But with modern high-speed video cameras, for example, these clips from DBKQs in Russia, it is clear that a chalked tip grabs the cue ball with no sliding whatsoever during a good hit. Look how much the tip deforms sideways due to the grabbing forces. If the tip slid, the cue would not be able to deliver enough speed or spin to the cue ball, as with a miscue shot. By the way, look how much chalk leaves a tip during a shot. Be sure to vacuum and wipe down a table periodically to remove all the settled chalk dust. I hope you enjoyed my myth-busting video. Thanks again to Pubo and the others for the high-speed video footage. Being able to see stuff in super slow motion really helps with understanding. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.